Hey guys, my name's Ed Bud, and on my channel here I typically review running shoes, but today I've got something special for you. If you do like running shoe content, please hit the subscribe button and click the bell down below for notifications of when new videos are launched. I'd much appreciate it. Normal viewers of my channel might be a bit like, what? This ain't a running shoe? So, cast your mind back to 1990. Try and picture a 10-year-old Ed Bud. I was stood in my local sports store, Marnie Sports in Yeovil. Sadly, that shop's long gone. It was the only place in town that you could buy Nike Air Jordans. I'd saved up about 75 pounds of hard-earned cash. That was a huge figure at the time for a 10-year-old guy. I had my heart set on a pair of the Nike Air Jordan 5s. It had to be the white, black and fire red colorway as well. I used to see them on the feet of people in Hip Hop Connection magazine. All my favorite musicians around about that time were rocking the Air Jordans. I can remember excitingly headed down to the store. I think it was like a Wednesday afternoon or something like that. I don't know why I remember that. Cash in my little hands and there they were up on the shelf. Not only the fire red colorway, but also the black and silver metallic. Holy smokes. The store attendant or clerk, I remember, came over and they sort of looked down at me and said, What do you want, little guy? How can I help you? And then heart and mouth, I said to him, I'd like a pair of the Nike Air Jordan 5s in a size 5, please. Finally, it was my chance to get those hallowed Air Jordans. So size 5 UK is about a size 6 US. I only had little feet back then. But sadly, the response was, Sorry, we've got none of those in stock. What? And then, of course, remember, there was no internet to just go online and get them. I had no other way of getting them. That was it. My chance was gone. I was heartbroken, guys. I'll tell you that now. I ended up leaving the store that day with some Nike Air TWs in like a sort of pink colorway. But they just, they just weren't the same. I remember going home thinking, man, I've really missed out there. For 30 years for me, those Air Jordan 5s were the ones that got away until now. So I picked these up on StockX very recently. I was so pleased to get them. They were set to be released at the end of March, but obviously due to world events, I think that's been pushed back down the release schedule now. It looks like now, for Europe at least, they're set to be released on May 2nd, which is awesome. Fingers crossed, let's hope that that does occur now. We've got that beautiful 3M tongue. You can actually see it gleaming a little bit off my studio lights. The classic Jumpman logo, the mesh panels that I always really loved the look of when I was a young guy. That padded, molded ankle collar. In hand, you know, you just appreciate just how padded it is. I used to dream about this really novel toggle lacing system. Such a cool feature at the time, and even now, 30 years later. One really impressive and peer pressure requirement, really, of any shoe around that time, when I was like 10, was the visible air sole unit. Looking through the original brochure that was released around about the time the Air Jordan 5 appeared in February of 1990, it does make a big hoo-ha out of the fact it's got this heel visible air sole unit and a flexible forefoot, that's what it says. You'd hope so. It was obviously really a unique innovation for the time. The alt soles got that cool, clear, icy vibe with the jump man poking through. And across there you've got that herringbone pattern to improve the traction and grip. It's absolutely brilliant. It's a great feeling to have these after 30 years, albeit they're a re-release, obviously. I've seen some people online that have completely rebuilt old 90s Jordan 5s from the ground up, really. It's amazing to see just how well that the upper has held up over all these years. I highly doubt that the leather here uh, truly is, but it's soft to the touch nonetheless. And of course, you've got the classic Nike Air branding back here at the heel. I really loved watching old war films, you know, back with my dad when I was like sort of 10, 12 years old. 
We really enjoyed those ones with the air battles around World War II. I remember seeing lots of planes around that period with loads of nose art. Obviously the nose art on those planes very similar to that shark tooth motif here on the midsole. A very famous German squadron around then was that of Baron von Richthofen. I think his squadron featured some like red planes. That was the first time I started painting aircraft like that. But the very first shark teeth designs, I think, appeared on some German craft on the nose of the Luftwaffe BF110. Little history of design there. So these weigh in at about 670 grams, which is quite colossal, really. Some of the running shoes that I normally review uh, around about sort of 280, 300 maybe at a push. That 670 grams is for a UK size 11, US size 12. On foot, these certainly feel true to size to me. I think if you were to wear a slightly thicker sock with them, you might want a little more room, but an 11's pretty much spot on for me. There's some reasonable rear foot cushion here, but it's certainly nothing like any of the air shoes you might get these days. You know, you've got no React here, you've got no Zoom X here. This is some old school tech, but that's what you should expect if you're going for this shoe. Certainly still feels cozy and plush to me, certainly for a 30 year old design. So I've been wearing these around the house for some pool table practice writing some running shoe video scripts, but I can also recommend them for playing some video games and just kicking back and relaxing, which of course everybody should be staying indoors right now. I'm no basketball player, but it's clear that these are more a casual shoe these days. Technological advancements obviously moved on somewhat. Looking at the finish overall, it's pretty on point really. There's a few paint issues here and there. I'll try and document some of those with some close-ups on screen for you. And it's certainly comparable with some of the high-end running shoes that I've been reviewing recently like the Vaporfly Next Percent Hakone and the Alpha Fly as well. Paint on the midsoles looking pretty crisp, it's decisive, and those red shark teeth, nice and pointy. They're clear, they're defined. Certainly a clean looking shoe. I'm loving the red stitch Nike Air logo on the back of the shoe, and the Jumpman is nice and clear, it's not too fuzzy. He's detailed and he's accurate, certainly to my 40 year old eyes. One of them still works pretty well. The stitching on the shoes, nice and clean overall. I haven't detected any issues, any frays. I'm very happy with the overall quality. An interesting thing to note is the card strobel board inside the shoe. It's kind of like how they would have done it back in the day. The insole's very rubbery as well, kind of old school, very different to some of the ones you'll get in running shoes recently released from Nike. Totally different to the insoles in things like the Pegasus 36 or the Vaporfly. So really, really happy with these to get them 30 years after Ed Budd originally wanted to get them. I uh, was waiting a long time, that's patience for you. So hopefully these do release on May the 2nd in Europe. Go and grab them, what a shoe. A classic shoe of all training shoes, I think. Mmm, smelling good. I always end up my running shoe vlogs with a musical interlude for you. Don't worry, I'm not gonna play anything. Not today, anyway. An album for you to check out, this time from Bernard Butler. This one's called People Move On. This was Bernard Butler's debut solo album, came out in 1998. A fantastic, warm sounding album. The whole recording just sounds big. It's kind of got that Phil Spector, Wall of Sound style vibe about it. There's some wonderful guitar tones on here, both electric and acoustic. Some big drums, lots of reverb, and some great tunes. Standout stuff is Change of Heart, Stay, and also the fantastic Not Alone. Every track's a winner on here. There's some beautiful acoustic songs as well. Bernard Butler showing his guitar chops, both on electric guitar and fingerstyle acoustic guitar. Do check this one out, super production, loads of great tunes. Bernard Butler's People Move On. Okay, that's all for me and my Jordan 5s for today. If you've enjoyed the video, please hit the subscribe button and click the bell for notifications below. Give the video a thumbs up like and place your comments below. I love answering viewer comments. Please share the video with your buddies. My name's Ed Bud and I'll be seeing you.